fun. Hey, how's it going? Good, how about you? Good, so a little update is uh, we get a lot of uh, approvals uh, for coming in to talk to the class before it starts, which is great. Um, I was expecting pretty good approval rate because it's in my faculty, but um, I'm actually pretty impressed by the fact that nobody said no yet, which is great. Um, I've got two people who haven't yet replied, but you know, that can happen later. There's only so many classes you can talk to in a week anyway, because they're scattered all across the clock. So it would be hard to get all of them in one week. But yeah, it's going really well. We've got six approved uh, classes of 20, between 20 and 40 people who I'm gonna go see this week. And that's and the approval for the, for the survey? Yeah, so we're gonna give them the survey that assesses the life skill learning preferences and then gives them a uh, a gamer type uh, questionnaire. And then the reason this is an important survey is it leads directly to the focus group, which is where we will be taking all of the people who have one gamer type, kind of grouping them together and asking them if they want to participate in a focus group. Um, they answer at the end of this survey if they're willing to be contacted for that. So uh, anybody who wants to do the focus group gets to help us uh, um, discuss the storyboards after all these storyboards are finished and come up with what they liked about them, what they didn't like about them. And in my research, I'm trying to predict if certain gamer types will like certain storyboards or not, or to what degree they'll like the storyboards and what degree they find them motivating. So hopefully we're able to predict that, let's say, explorer types will enjoy quests that involve going out into their community and collecting resources. And we'll be able to predict that uh, really competitive people will prefer the more competitive focus storyboards. And at the same time, in under a same quest, le less prefer the ones that are not competitive. That would give some really good data that, that, that we're on the right track. But there's this whole other layer of why it's, why it's important. It's because they're gonna give us really valuable design feedback into what we could do to make those storyboards better. Or if they like the storyboards, you know, go to presses cool. with that and put that right in the game. Cool. It looked like you had some some ideas for quests popping up today. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So the a couple of quest ideas came to me um, while I was on the elliptical. I actually think pretty clearly while I'm exercising. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah, so one of the I, I was thinking back to psychology and it, it became like a little more clear that um, a lot of psychological commonalities between people, like needing a vision and a mission and a purpose is like one way to say it. But another way to say it is that there's common struggles that people go through and having clarities in your objectives, like when it comes to, well, let's just get down to the actual example. I'll, there's a trend that people tend to fight the battles that their parents lost. Um, it's just like, it's something that happens. It's sort of intrinsic to human nature that you, you, you do the struggles that your ancestors struggled with. And that's just something common. So mm -hmm. I thought it might be kind of cool to have the dragon capture your parents as, or, or, or your loved one as, as one quest and, and to get them back, you have to identify the struggle that they went through and, uh, and grapple with it. Just grapple with the struggles of, of your, of your father grapples with the struggles of your ancestor. Doesn't mean you have to resolve it, but that's mm -hmm. a super beneficial thing to start thinking. What were the challenges that that those before me struggled with? Yeah, yeah, super powerful. I don't, I don't know about you, but as we're creating this as well, I'm I'm becoming more aware of my day to day life, um, more in terms of these mini quests, <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, and and definitely becoming aware of you know, the dragons as they show up, the challenges. Um, and, you know, since, since like, this is week two, um, and we just had the weekend. And, you know, one thing about this journey as well is there's always an opportunity to refine these uh, tools, it's called them tools of transformation or life skills that we're weaving into this quest. And uh, yeah, I had some really powerful uh, refinements. Um, and it's, it's exciting to be weaving these into these quests. And I'm curious, mm -hmm. like, how do we weave these in, in a way that allows us to continue to develop the quest and not just make a rigid, here's what it is, here's what you do. Um, mm -hmm. 
and as I'm talking through it, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this is, this is where it be, it takes on life where, you know, where we build it and then people take the quest and then it becomes alive and then it will, then it will, yeah, it will evolve. It's a living thing. It, it's not mm -hmm. going to be Pac-Man. It's more of a, like, a, these are some things that we've gamified in these ways. And the proof is sort of in, if you completed it or not, and then your, your pod or your little discussion pod gives you some accountability too. But I think it's going to be a little bit of a mix too. You know, like in the mini games, there are some things where there will be game mechanics, like a word search or like a, a chest opening and you're getting gold and unlocking another thing. But those aren't going to tie you to like being really rigid with what you can accomplish with the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're just going to make the game stuff possible. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another thing that I've, that, that has shown up, like I've been in this sort of personal development coaching world for over a decade and uh, still have tons and tons to learn, have learned tons. And one thing I, I see is, uh, I don't know how related this is to the, you know, the, the research and design, but one thing I'm seeing is people expect to go to a weekend seminar or take a course and answer all their questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, just this one question that's, that's showing up for me lately around know your why, what's your reason why, like what's your deeper purpose? i um, been listening to this guy, David Goggins, who's a, a phenomenal athlete and, and a teacher on basically, basically doing what our mind says is impossible. And one of the things he says, and this is, I've heard this over and over and worked with this concept for years and years and years now, um, know your why. And it's amazing how it can, the same lesson can continue to unfold and give you new lessons. So, um, yeah. You know, another part we kind of talked about this as well is, you know, what will it be like when the participant gets to the end of their quest? What's next? Is there a beginning and an end? And what we talked about the other day was we definitely want to make a beginning and an end and a good story arc. And also right. open it up for the evolution and the continuation. What would you say about that? At least for each dragon. Yeah. The, the end of the main story quest for the dragon. That doesn't mean the dragon's gone though. Like a good book doesn't have to kill off every character at the end of the book. Yeah. Do you see the, the last Avengers Infinity War? Almost. I've seen almost Infinity, <laughs> Infinity War. Yeah. But the, then uh, Endgame, the Endgame one. Don't tell seen. me. I haven't seen it yet. No. We won't. Yeah. I mean, we we're, not, we're, not gonna, we're not going to snap our fingers and kill half the characters in the quest at the end of it just for effect yeah <laughs> I think the point of introducing these dragons is that they represent a core struggle or a core facet of human action and human relationships so they're like the avatar of that emotional domain like the relationship dragon is going to throw quests at you if you want more quests you can get more quests mm -hmm. you know like i think people like you say you know your why they're gonna, we're going to start by doing a sort of like a solo part where you get taught some basic skills in order to interact with a group, like life sk uh, coaching skills, um, and then be introduced at least on a basic level to each of the dragons so you know what they represent. And that's basically it for the solo. Then after that, you choose your why. You choose what dragon you, you pursue, right? You're not, you're not going to go after money dragon if you feel like your only worry in the world is the fact that you can't find a wife or something like that. I mean, like, yeah. You're, you're going to go after whatever you need to do the most. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's been a, another development around. So one thing we're, we're doing is we're putting together a board of advisors. We want, we want to provide as much support to the participants as possible outside of just, you know, one pedagogical guide or these, these dragons. Um, mm -hmm. A couple areas we're looking. One is elders stories. Is a is a good potential that we'll be able to weave in. Yeah, digital stories. Digital eld stories from real real people, their achievement stories, their what they learned, challenge stories, and another one is building a um, a community of support 
to you know make this this the best possible program and keep it alive and and grow it and what and part of that is building a board of advisors so there's this one guy um i won't mention his name but um i interviewed him for my podcast phenomenal business person a young guy he's built multiple million dollar businesses um started when he was what 15 or 16 and he's got an international business degree and a really he's become a really good friend so he called me up and he's we've got a call set for tomorrow and we're having our first conversation and that will be the first conversation for developing our board of advisors and he's very interested to help out so could he be our he be our silver dragon or money dragon it's possible because <laughs> yeah, that's right you want to just say a couple that, words about what you mean um, by that yeah so i've had this kind of uh, idea that maybe the advisors will represent uh, their domain of expertise as a dragon. So um, the intro videos could be using some of their quotes. I don't think probably directly their image or voice, but maybe their quotes and they'll help us ad advise us on the quests for those dragons. So the silver dragon is money. Um, the red dragon is um, romance and uh, uh, so like connected connections with romance and stuff. Um, but the, and the, yeah, pink dragon was or orange dragon. What's the orange dragon? Yeah, but we have an orange potential orange dragon as well, the doctor. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I, well, I won't mention any names, but yeah, again, we're 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 bringing in phenomenal people to represent these these dragons. They may even be the voice of the dragon, <laughs> which is maybe, pretty maybe cool. Maybe with like a voice filter to make them look more like like whoa, 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 that kind of thing exactly yeah oh and we were talking the other day about okay we always see these most dragons it's are, are considered they have these male voices right so we did a little research you found this one female dragon and uh, we want to yeah. we want to include both female dragons are a thing for sure and uh, a lot of my inspiration comes from world of warcraft and that that whole lore the, the emerald dragon flight and all those there's tons of dragons in in world of warcraft and hearthstone and Hearthstone is like a surprise uh, inspiration to me. I never thought I'd be drawing from Hearthstone, but they do their mobile apps so well. And it's so snappy and responsive and feels impactful that I, I like their styling for nothing else other than the styling, but the interface and the styling and the, the feeling of navigating Hearthstone is very satisfying and, and, and very gamified. Um, so it's a good it inspiration. Is. Yeah, I really like it as well. And it's amazing how quickly you've been able to pull up examples online of the different components we're looking at this is my world <laughs> so what's next what's next this week yeah this week is just starting so we've got a lot up but uh we're we're digging in now we've got structure we've got ideas we're already gamifying some things in storyboards so i think we're going to continue the thread of what the solo campaign looks like and gamifying these learning out outcomes starting with the objectives learning objectives breaking them down into each teachable moment and gamifying each teachable moment. Sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun. All right. Well, let's wrap up this video and uh, thanks for joining Dove and thanks for you viewers who are watching this day two of week two. Game thanks, on. Robin. Thank you, Robin. Exactly. All the support. <laughs>